Welcome back guys, today we are going to create this automatic carousel with controls and a counter as you can see if I can pause the carousel then hit start again if I click on net it pauses itself then it carry on even if I click on the left side and then carry on if I pause I'm still able to carry on with the carousel by my own and then I can play that again okay without further ado this is new dev let's grow together and let's get this started all right guys so I will shrink this window and leave it for future reference and as you can see I already opened my VS Code ready with my files so with the HTML exclamation mark hit enter we got our initial boiler plate then remove this meta tag give it a title of carousel then let's give it a website icon because i love to it's going to be the javascript logo remove the type attribute as well as the shortcut keyword those are meant for internet explorer then here we're going to use a nike some icons from boxicons.com some right here just going to keep sorry going to paste the link right there all right, so after that, so instead of our body, we hit main tag, sorry, type, and then go and hit live server. This should open a new tab inside of our browser. There you go. Of course, it's empty. Now we need to create a new div called BG container. Inside of this div, we're going to have a header, then an H1 with the title simple carousel, just like that, then a section. With the class of images images and an image but with the id of image initially empty both attributes don't worry about it we will did we will deal with that later now after that we're going to have our control diff so inside of it first of all an h1 with the class of corner initially going from one of course then we will create our bar and inside of it our progress it's going to be this green color this green this is our progress and this whole extension is our bar this is our corner all right so just beneath this part create a new div called btn hyphen group so here we're going to have our button our first button with the class of arrow and the class of pref stands for previous then here going to have my icon so I already have have it here just gonna paste it and there you go now the same is going to be for the next so pretty much the same a button with a class of arrow class of next and my icon but between them I'm going to have a button with a class of place hyphen pause and then two icons there the play icon and the pause icon naturally and there you go okay this is uh this is everything for our html let me just shrink this window actually not it's right there now let's jump into our css and let's carry on by restarting everything from scratch i mean box sizing border box and then the body we need to remove the default margin so margin none then mean height 100 view high height sorry then the background color should be this color i am lazy so just gonna paste it so this is the background color then put everything at the center by saying display grid then place items at the center and finally font family that i use is trebu chat ms and some service as a backup pro for the font family all right, if I scroll down, let's go with the main. Let's give it a width, 100%. Let's give it a max width of 600 pixels. Now my BG container. First, I'm going to use the shorthand background property for this. And going to use the URL function. Then this is background position, background size. And the image is coming from the web page freepick.com right just hit pattern right here and then you can pick any any of those that you like the most right 
having said that let's proceed let's give it a margin 0 to em let's give it a padding 0 0.67 em 0 0.67 em and 0 at the bottom let's give it a border radius 0.2 em 1.2 em now let's give it a display flex flex direction column align items at the center okay now for my h1 this is going to be so easy so just gonna target this header and h1 give it a bit of color text align center font wave font size and a little bit of leather spacing like so with value of four pixels now the section which is my wrapper of my image so section here is going to be which is going to have actually <laughs> A padding of 6.67 em and 30 percent left and right like so then inside of this section i will have my image but don't worry about it this is in order to make it responsive height of outer and the max width of sorry of 200 pixels i know that you're not able to see anything but we'll we'll did We'll, we'll deal with that uh, when we get into our JavaScript. So now, <clears throat> the control. The control here, we're going to use the grid template. So for this part, I'm going to use grid area. So remember, control has three divs, three parts, one, two, and three. So this is going to be my grid items, and this is the grid father. And I just use the grid area CSS property and just call it for corner, corner, bar, bar, and building group, building group. Now, the control, which is the father, first of all, with 100%, then display this is a grid element, and then grid template columns one fraction from the available space, only one column, and then grid template areas right here. We're going to use the areas that we just created first of all it's going to be the corner for the first row second row is going to be the bar and the last row is going to be btn hyphen group right just like that and finally let's just say place items at the center like so there you go okay now uh in order for our corner corner would like to say display none initially okay then after that i need to target my bar so let me scroll down so bar right here border bottom uh to pixel solid and the color is d1 cf cf just like that but with the initial width oh actually width of 70 percent and then position of relative why because inside of that bar we have the progress bar like so so for testing purposes i'm going to give it a width of 50 percent just for testing purposes the height should be the same value as the border button in order to have the same you know dimension to cover now let's give it a position in absolute now here i'm going to use background property linear gradient to the left these colors to give it a nice color and also a box shadow to give it a nice shadow effect like this you see okay finally since i'm going to use transition here 0.56 is for the speed of the animation because this is having this this animation see but okay so after that we need to target the btn hyphen group the father and we will say display this is a flex justify content space around where are you space around then align items at the center let's give it a bit a little bit of margin point uh, point eight rem now let's give it a width of 100 percent for the btn group itself there you go now we need to target each button now so btn have a group my button with 30 pixels height 30 pixels border radius 50 percent to give it a circular shape 
outline none border none text color should be gray cursor of pointer and then a background color should be the easy 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 and i think that's it for the button now we need to target my icon itself so again see as a selector target the icon let's give it a font size 1.8 em now let's give it a display this is an inline plug element in order for what to be able to give it a margin left of minus 0 0.14 rem sorry em units okay after that i would like to give it a little bit of hover effect for this part for my button uh light gray sorry light blue color as you can see there you go now the first icon which is the place i go i would like to get rid of that initially so i will target the play pulse the the box play icon display no and there you go finally let me just finish with my media queries so add media parentheses mean width of 500 pixels for this part curly brazers header h1 is going to have font size 1.4 rem there you go after that i need to target section the image mean height of 200 pixels there you go now my control here where are you this one right here is just going to grab it paste it i need just to change columns and areas so remove remove and this is going to be the first column it's going to have 20 percent and the second 80 percent so two columns so for my first row is going to be for the bar and the second row is going to be corner sorry corner and then the btn group let's remove this row we don't need that anymore and there you go but we need to show my corner here so again corner and display this is a block element and then give it a color of white Ta -da! almost similar all right now in order to deal with the images we need to go with our javascript but do not forget to link that file so script source that slash main.js right here first things first we need to target we need to get all of our images but let me show you where did i get them i got them from the web page where vectorlogo.com is a page that you can get your logos in uh, svg format all right you can choose whatever you like the most you can just copy the source of the image and where i'm what i'm about to do is just to grab each source image and to save them into an array that i just called images okay now our first step here is to use dog manipulation i would like to start with the next image sorry with the next button so cons next equals document that query selector i'll call it arrow and call it next and then after that, i need to target my images so equals to document that get element by id img why because i call it that way id img there you go all right after that let me start with account variable start from zero and then for my next button i'm going to attach a listener which is going to be click and my callback function is going to be next function now let's create that function now next function what do i want first now since i'm going to use a carousel that is initially is going to move forward it makes sense that i will start using my count how i need to increase that count by one so plus plus right here great now what do i want next i want to show the next available image from my array how can i do that well i need to target the source attribute and the alt attribute for my image 
but since I already have my image, just call it, yeah, just call it image, not images, just image. Since I already have my image right here, I can do it by just saying image by using the dot notation as source as RC. Yes, source should be equal to what exactly? Well, I'm going to use my array. I'm going to use square bracers in order to get the index of that the current image. So I am getting the the source of the image. But here I'm going to use my count just like that and the same way for the alt attribute since this is just a string type I'm going to call it img hyphen dollar signs and here I'm going to use the count in order to give it a unique name okay just like that after that I will increase my counter because I want to show the user that there is actually you know counting so uh, first of all we need to get that so const counter equals document that query selector and I call it counter, which is my H1. Where are you? Ta -da -da. There you go. This is my H1. So since is, or I already have my H1, counter, I will say inner text. Again, backticks. And here I'm going to use zero dollar sign color braces because I'm going to show two digits. That's the reason why. And then just going to show what my count, but in it plus one why because initially I'm saying from zero but initially I want to show the number one as we said as we as we hard coded right here the number one all right so I think that's pretty much it I mean for now now let's give it a whirl and uh, awesome now, uh, before we move forward, I need to style this. So remember when I told you that for testing purposes, I set this progress bar for 50%. Let's remove that and put it back to zero. So this is going to be for my JS, JS uh, manipulation right here. If I can say manipulation, okay. okay this one, this property is going to change thanks to the JavaScript. And how can I do that? Well, we're going to use a little bit of formula here. First of all, the manipulation. It's going to call cons, then progress, which is my progress bar, then document that query selector, and I call it how that progress, double S. There you go. So it's going to follow the same idea here. So progress dot what a style with my God style that yes width here is going to change this width but dynamically and how can I do that well first of all let me just type dollar sign curly braces and here we are going to have our formula we are uh, increasing the width of our progress bar here with percentage units where are you uh, yes percentage units so I'm going to use fractions. So I have initially a hundred percent, Jesus, a uh, hundred percent. So my fraction here is going to be regarding about what exactly? Well, the length of my images array. So images that length, but minus one. Okay. And this is going to be times or multiply by what my count, but Remember, we are dealing with what exactly? With percentages. So at the end, do not forget to add the percentage uh, symbol at the end. All right, so now let's give it a whirl. And it's not working. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. What have I done? I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, uh, truly sorry. So uh, yeah, my mistake was here. This one right here. This is the error because we need to use the dot. Yeah, counter the document creation the corner because our corner wasn't counting, wasn't showing the, the, the count. So now it should be working by now. So ta-da! Alright. But as you can see, it's working. Okay, this is for the next function. Now what about the previous one? So it's going to be pretty much the same. Let me grab this. It's the same idea. But here, going to call it pref for pret, and as well as here for pref 
I mean, sorry, for previous button. And it's going to be pref. It's going to follow the same logic. Hold on, just gonna grab this, copy, paste. And it's going to be pop, 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 the previous function. Let me just create that function. And again, so this is, this is the previous function, right? So we need to decrease by one our counter, first of all. And then naturally we want to target our image, then set that image as well as these, as well as these, and as well as these. So, I mean, let me show you, okay? Let me just grab it, paste it. Let's go forward a little bit. Pop, 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 and back, and back, and back. And ta-da, it's working. But the major point here is that we are repeating ourselves for this. So it's naturally, it's convenient for us to create a new function. We're going to call handle changes with no params, all right? So I'm going to grab the whole code right here my god okay again i'm going to grab the whole code right here going to paste it and remove it remove it from each function and just call the function handle changes and for both functions of course can changes help the changes indeed it's working however you might okay this is frozen okay refresh handle changes there you go blah 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 okay there you go, okay. Uh, however, you might notice the bug that we have. I mean, if we still clicking next, 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 it goes and infinite and beyond. <laughs> Even though if we, hold on, if we target from the left side, we got zero <laughs> and negative numbers and we cannot have that. So how can we solve this? Well, first of all, for the next function, we need a conditional. We will say if my count is more or equals than my image that length i want to reboot my count back to zero just like that okay so if we give a world back to zero see ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, back to zero okay so the same idea will follow right here for the previous function uh, conditional if my count is less than zero which is which means is negative please set my count to be equals back to the image images my array that length but minus one all right i think that should do it if we click here there you go there you go there you go there you go and so on we go like this and if we go forward and yep there you go by this point, the code is working properly. However, if we refresh the page, we are not getting any image at the beginning. So how can we solve that? By just typing the following. We're going to use the window global object for every single browser, and we're going to attach a listener. For what? Dumb content loaded. And be aware that you need to use uh, uppercase here, these first things and the C and the L, okay? is uh okay they say uh, is case sensitive the the event and after this we just need to call handle changes just like that and if i refresh hold on you see we got our first image and again and again okay it's kind of slow let me let me close all the pages that we don't need anymore right let me go here and if i refresh okay i can refresh now okay there you go so our next step is going to be how to make our carousel uh, automatic. So in order to do that, we just need to use set interval. So set interval, and I'm going to call the next function and every one second. Okay, so next function. And there you go. Let's just give it a little refresh. Okay, it's kind of a bug over there, but don't worry. Even if there is a dark bug here, if we click on the previous or next button, you see? Did you see? We have that little bug there. So in order to clear to go to <clears throat> to solve that, that means that inside of this function, the next function, the previous function, we need to clear the set interval. So first things first, 
I need to save this into a variable. I'm going to call it interval. And then I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it reset inter. My god. Now inside of this function, I need to clear my interval and I call it interval. But this function, I need to call it every time I click or the next button or the previous button. So with this way, we just solve the bug. I mean, if we click on that, hold on, we click on that, it's resetting. It's not moving anymore because we just call it this and we just clear the interval. Now, in order to call our automatic carousel again, just beneath this line of code, we just need to say the following. We just need to call interval to be equal to set interval and to activate again the next function but every 1.500 milliseconds so oh, a thousand and hundred milliseconds so if i click a pause and then it carry on and then if i click on the left it pause and then carry on okay great now our next step is to involve our play and pause buttons so first things first we need to apply the manipulation in order to get my button so I already have it right here. Just gonna paste it. Scans play pause. The command that query selector and that play pause. This is my button. So the same idea as we did before. Play pause. That attach listener, which is going to be click, and a callback function. I will call it toggle function. And then right here, I'm going to create my function. I'm going to in order to tell to JavaScript. To stop the carousel, we need to create a new variable here. I'm going to call it false. It should be equals to false initially. Why? Because initially our carousel is going to run by itself. So yes, it's not being false. It's playing the carousel. <laughs> okay. So when I hit toggle function, I need to toggle that pause variable. So I will say pause equals to the different value or the negative value of the pause. So it's going to switch from false to true to true to false and so on all right next i'm going to use a conditional i will say if my carousel is being sorry pause i want to target my play pause button and i need to target to use the children element this returns an array and i need to get access to my first icon which is the play icon and i need to show sorry let's remove this no let's put it right here and I need to show my first icon. So I'm going to say that style block equals to, sorry, display. This should be equal to block. Okay, of course. And now if it's pause, if I'm showing the play icon, I need to hide none my pause icon. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty much the same but vice versa so grab base this is going to be none and this should be block all right let's give it a whirl play pause play and pause of course it's just toggling the icons but it's not passing our cover so okay so how we can do that is was is just by saying the following we just need to call who might reset interval right here so if i pause my carousel i need to call reset interval but as you might guess it's not going to work it's, it's going to work only for a while because you're going to call interval again i mean if i click here it's going to call it again anyway so how can we solve that well we need to create a new function right here i'm going to call it auto play no params and here's my conditional. If my carousel is not being paused naturally because initial is false, and then this negative is going to turn that to true. If this condition is true, please run, please run the next function. Please run that function. Okay, this is my out of play. Now, here I'm going to change this part. So instead of next function, I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste, I'm going to comment. I'm going to call the autoplay. Why? Okay, let's just 
reboot everything. So initially my variable pause is false naturally because my carousel is running. But when I click on this button, it's going to switch that to true. So if it's being paused, it's going to call reset interval. It's going to clear the interval and here it's going to call out of play. So since this is calling out of play, but it's checking that my pause is actually true and which this negative value is turning that to false, it's not going to run the out of play. Therefore, my carousel will remain in the pause, like it's not going to move forward. It's not going to do anything at all. See? And now I'm able to go back, move forward. If I click play, and then this one, it will run again. If I refresh, there you go. Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did it. Please do not forget to subscribe to, to the channel and leave a like if you find this video useful in any way. And see you in the next time.